In this series of five tutorials, we'll be creating a stadium using RailClone. In this, the first part, we'll look at how to use and adapt library styles to add the railings and walls. In the following tutorials, we'll be building the chairs, populating the arena with an audience and creating the roof structure. All the necessary scene files for this tutorial can be downloaded from i2soft's website. Once downloaded, to get started, open stadiumstart.max. Alternatively, to see the end result, open stadiumend.max. These files contain all the geometry and splines necessary to complete the scene. RailClone 2 comes with a comprehensive library. In this scene, we're going to use some of those existing styles. So to get started, create a new RailClone object in any viewport. Go to the Modify panel and come down to the button that says None to open the library browser. We want to go to the Architecture folder Bleachers and pick on the Fence High Library Style. Click on Import Selected to use it. RailClone objects typically use one or more splines in order to determine the dimensions of the array. To choose the spline from the scene, go to the Base Objects Rollout, click on Path and click on Spline None and then pick the spline from the scene. In this case it's the green spline here called Spline Railings. When you click on that you'll get railings everywhere that spline occurs in the scene. In the next example, we'll add a wall to the low railing library style. Start by creating another new rail clone object. And just like before, go to modify, click on none to open the library, and this time we'll pick fence low. Come to the base objects rollout, click on spline, and pick the purple spline called spline fence from the scene. We now want to modify the style, so come back to the style rollout, Click on the Open Style Editor button and we can see the existing style here with a single linear array. We're going to create a new linear array by dragging it into the um, construction view. Connect the existing spline path to the spline input of the new array and add three new segment objects. Each of these segment objects relates to a point on this wall. We've got the left hand side, the mid and the right hand side. So come back into the style editor, pick on the first segment, click on the object button and pick the mid section from the scene. Then in the next one click left and finally select the right hand segment. Now we'll wire the mid section, the large section, to the default input on the linear array and we'll end up with a large wall running around the uh, pitch. As you can see, the wall currently goes over the railing, so we want to move the railing up so it sits atop the wall. To do that, go back to the railings linear array, go to the Z offset, and turn this up until the railing appears above the wall. So, uh, we do want it just to sit on top there like that. With that done, we now want to add some joints to this so it looks like it's cast out of concrete slabs. So we have these two joint segments here and here. Um, we'll probably want one of these at the beginning of the wall, so plug that into the start and the right one into the end. And then we'll combine these two together to make a joint. To combine two segments together, use a compose operator. Drag that into the construction view and we'll do this in reverse order so we want to cap the end off first so drag the right into the first compose slot then the left after that and finally drag the composer's output to the evenly input you can now see we've got joints about every meter it's a little bit too regular so let's change the spacing between them by going into the settings of the linear array, go to the properties and rules and change the distance to about 3 meters. You can see now the spacing is much wider between them. We now have a finished wall style but what if we'd like to easily adjust the position on the Y axis? We could open up the style editor and manually adjust the two styles Y offset property. As styles become more complex though this can be rather laborious. It's far easier to wire together these parameters so that they can be easily adjusted from a single node. This also has the advantage of being adjustable from directly within the modify panel. So to make that easier to reuse, let's come into here and we can use a numeric parameter 
wired to some of the properties of these arrays but currently they're not exposed so in order to reveal the parameters so that we can wire a numeric node to them simply right click on the generator go to export and go to Y offset in this case to show the Y offset at the bottom of the generator do the same thing for the other generator and then connect both of these together with this numeric node here and change the numeric nodes type to scene units and what we can do now is to use the parameters rollout in the modify panel to change the Y offset of the whole style so with that done we can close the style editor make a duplicate copy of this by hitting control V make sure it's a copy not an instance and hit OK now we'll reassign the base object of this new rail clone item by going to base objects re-clicking on spline and clicking on the blue spline there called spline upper fence now you can see that's added it to all the edges of the stadium and we just need to get in there and use the Y offset parameter that we just created just to move the wall back so it's roughly in line with the edge of the stadium seating. Rail clone segments geometry is embedded in a similar fashion to Max's compound objects. However, these can be extracted and edited, allowing you to easily modify existing styles. In this example, we're going to create the glass wall between levels by modifying an existing curtain wall style. So let's get started by creating another new Rail Clone Pro object. Go to the Modify panel, open the library, and this time we're going to go to Facade, Curtain Wall, and pick Curtain Wall number 7 by double clicking. Come down to the Base Objects Rollout, pick on Properties Spline, and pick the spline in the scene called Lower Stands. And you'll see that's added the glass wall around the whole stadium. But as present, at present it's too high and we would like the transom which is in the middle of the wall to be nearer the top. If we just open the style editor you can see by clicking on one of the segments that the object says embedded since the geometry is nowhere currently in the scene. To get the geometry out of the rail clone object and back into the scene to enable further editing we simply need to pick the segment and come up to here where the button says extract segment to a new object. And If we click on that It'll come up with a dialog box, just accept OK, and the geometry will appear at its original location, which in this case is somewhere near the middle of the pitch. We want to do that to all three of these segment objects. So for each one, we'll click on Extract. There are now all three segments in the middle there. You'll notice by clicking on a segment now that it's gone from saying embedded to saying corner 001 and that's because this segment is now linked to the geometry we've just extracted back into the scene meaning any changes now made to this geometry will be automatically reflected in the rail clone style. So let's select all three. Now with these three selected let's add an edit poly modifier to all three so they're linked. Go into vertex mode and select the vertices on the top and simply by moving them down you can see the style or the geometry in the style updating in the window down at the bottom here. So as I move the top up and down we can set the height from here. We can also pick the vertices for the transom and move that up and down too. The beauty as well is that once we've created these we can delete them again since a copy of these is still going to be stored in the original rail clone object. So though I've changed, made these changes and it's reflected in the scene if I now delete them, it keeps the changes we've just made. And that concludes the first part of the stadium tutorial. We've created all the railings, we've created the concrete walls, we've created a glass wall between the levels. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how to add billboards to the walls and randomise materials to select from six possible textures. Meanwhile, for more tutorials on Rail Clone 2, please visit our tutorials page, our Vimeo and YouTube channels, or follow us on Facebook and Twitter.